my trip to the Arctic was looking at experiments for exactly what my PhD was researching, pumping water through the ice. So we went out there to do small scale trials to see firstly if we could actually pump water, if it was going to be a feasible approach to refreezing the ice, also to, to measure the effect and thirdly to engage with the local community to see what they thought about our idea. We went out onto the ice in the snowmobile, we then drilled a hole with an auger, so drilled through the about a metre of ice that was there, and then we had to assemble the pump and put the pump down into the water below the ice, and then we pumped water um, through the ice and then out onto the surface, um, and then just let it flow, and then we took various measurements of uh, the thickness and the area that we were covering with the water. So it's flowing slowly over the middle. Let's go and take a closer look. So this is almost solid ice, but it's a little bit spongy. Here we are. We've got the icy pump spewing out water. And it's actually taken quite a while to spread, which is unexpected. This is the area where we were pumping yesterday. In the outer edges, the water's flowed further than where it was when we stopped pumping last night. And it's really mushy snow. Uh, and then when we put a foot in it, we've got water coming up. Towards the middle here, it's more solid ice, but it's a little bit spongy. It's a lot darker than the surrounding snow. Visibility is terrible. I can't see anything outside there apart from a little bit of ice. Well, a lot of ice. One of the big ones was talking to local people and how much effect climate change has had on them and the changes they've experienced. Up there it's warming four times faster than the global average, they're seeing the effect. And so it was inspiring in that it was worrying and we need to go and do what we, what we want to do quickly. Um, and that it was inspiring also because that was really the first field experiment of this technique. Um, so we were there as a small group um, and we'd actually managed to get, out, get to the Arctic and go out onto the ice and actually do field experiments. And that just in itself was really inspiring. There were two purposes of the outreach work really. So the, the primary one is, do the locals think that this is a good idea? Do they think we're crazy? Do they think that this is something that's gonna be harmful to them or something that they don't want? In which case, obviously, we would have to reevaluate whether we actually want to go and do this, and especially, I mean, perhaps it would vary region by region, but we definitely wouldn't want to go and do this somewhere where it wasn't supported. So that was the main, in terms of you know, engaging with the local population on whether they, they think it's a good thing. And that was very well received. The fact that we actually were going there and wanted to help them and wanted to do something for them and wanted to provide a benefit, they were very, very supportive of. And then the second side was, how can they support us in our implementation of it? So obviously we had the guides who were local people supporting us when we were going out onto the ice, but also areas perhaps where the ice needs thickening most. So we heard examples of there's certain areas where the caribou normally migrate, and because the ice is getting thinner, the caribou aren't migrating in that region anymore, or they're migrating later. So that might be an area where, with the scheme in, in the long run, we would target those areas to preserve the caribou migration or to pre preserve routes for the locals traveling themselves. Uh, we found that, that the water that we were pumping actually started off going through the whole depth of the snow before flowing outwards. And so we also found that the flow area was corresponded approximately to kind of the volume of water we expected from what we were pumping, which uh, makes sense. But that was good to see.